How's it going guys? So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be learning how to make this really cool MoGraph animation using some planes and making this really cool stylized grid and you can use it for anything you want. It's really great for concert visuals or backgrounds and it's all done procedurally. So let's get right into doing that. Before I do though, if you wanna get the project file for this, it's available on Patreon or you can get it for a dollar in the description. If you've never heard of the Patreon, it's got tons of really cool stuff. Monthly exclusive tutorials, we have 10 procedural materials that we release a month. We have around 90 on there so far, all of those available. We You get all the re-uploads of my live streams on tier two and tier three. Bunch of other really cool things on the Patreon if you wanna go check that out in the description. But let's get into how to create this. All right, so now we have just a plain scene. I'm gonna hit Shift A get a plane, hit S5, control A, apply the scale, and I'm gonna hit RX90. What that did was it rotated it on the X axis by 90. So now we have this fun guy. Well, we won't even need to subdivide anything because it's all procedural. It's just gonna be cutting through this one face. I'm gonna go here to Eevee, and then right down here, we're gonna click new, and then one very important thing right here on blend mode, switch to alpha blend that's going to allow the transparency node that we're going to implement in just a minute to actually work so now let's go straight into the uh the shading tab we have this and we're going to delete the default principle we won't need him and we're going to get in a mix shader so you go to the search shift a search mix shader now we're going to get in a transparent node transparent bsdf specifically and we'll plug him on the bottom this order is very important now let's get in an emission em emission node and plug him right here so let's just bring him up here and now let's start to manipulate the factor that's going to really give us our shapes now let's get in a shift a a voronoi right here we actually need to get a color ramp before him so shift a c o l color ramp plug the color here to the factor and now we're going to get the Voronoi texture. If you do not have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, go to Edit, Preferences, type in Node, and you'll get the Node Wrangler, hit the little check mark. And what that's going to allow you to do is once you click the Voronoi texture, Control T, gives you a nice uh, mapping setup and use the object coordinate. Now you get a more even spread in terms of the scale of the five that the, pl the plane is on. I'm going to go from linear to constant. And what that's going to let me do is have these hard edges. So now you can see this fun little dot area. We want it to be a dot grid, just not a, not a plane of dots. So we bring the randomness down to zero. Now we have a nice dot grid. So now let's start moving and texturing on the vector line. I showed that in one of my other shaders, my node shading series. If you just type in, in the search on YouTube, Ducky 3D shading, you'll be able to see those that small series of tutorials. But um, now we're gonna use the brick texture here, and that's going to drive the grid of this animation so we're going to go here brick texture plug it there everything goes crazy that's all right now we're going to get a mix rgb and i'll show you what that does in a second just follow along and i'll clarify this we use this object coordinate on color two so let's bring the factor down to one if you have the factor on one it's as if these two nodes don't exist because it's not recognizing the brick texture because it's canceling it out if you bring the brick texture i mean the mix sh shader to a factor of zero it's as if this, this brick, blah, 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 sorry, the brick texture is completely affecting the Voronoi. So this is a really cool trick. So I was like, I only want to use a little bit of the brick texture. Now we get this fun situation. I want to quickly pause here for a second and say, if you want to learn how to make the logo animation you saw at the very beginning of my video, the guy who animated it, my friend David, he just made his first tutorial on how to make that animation. If you want to go check it out, that's linked in the description. Let's continue. So I'm going to bring the mix shader to something like this, somewhere around there and then we can bring the factor of the color ramp somewhere over here, and then we can start manipulating the texture some more. I'm gonna bring the scale at around 12, and that's gonna really give us some cool stuff, and then I'm gonna say bring my factor to somewhere right here. You can see how it's giving this really cool scale effect. I'm gonna give my brick height at 0 0.5. I'm gonna give my frequency at three. That kind of changes up a little bit of the pattern, and that's really nice. Keep your offset there, your frequency there, I'm going to give myself a scale of 10, give us some smaller things. We need our motor smoothness down to zero and keep your motor size there. So now what we can do is play with this color ramp until we get 
a nice grid setup. I think I might have to flip the color ramp to get what I'm looking for. Yes. Okay. So once we flip the color ramp, that's when we start getting the really, really cool grid. Now here's one super cool thing about this. This brick texture is controlling the size of our dots. So you see how there's this color too. If you bring it up, it changes the scale of some of the things and that's really, really cool and really powerful. So if you wanna play around with the grid size variation, you can do that and then the mortar keep it at black and your color is just doing its thing. So now we have this really cool setup. Now we can start to run our camera through it to get a really cool scene. So let's go back here to layout and I'm gonna hit shift A and get a plane and hit S8. This is how I make loops. I always have a plane in the middle, scale to eight, so that everything within this grid here stays within the grid and doesn't go outside of it. So I'm gonna hold down control and bring him to the very edge. What control does is allow it to snap to the grid and then we'll bring him to the very middle and that's the only two planes we're gonna to need to mess with for the rest of the uh, time. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna highlight everything, hit M, new collection, and just call it plain, planes. And what this is going to do is allow us to move this thing down the line. Exact, so shift A, instance, planes. Hold down control again and make sure it snaps like that. Now you might say, why not use an array? The array doesn't preserve the texture the way I want it to. And what the instance does is it makes this really nice collection of objects. And so when I change it here, it also changes here. And it also changes it on all the other things that I add. So say if I'm in this collection, you can see the collection is right here. So if I say, hey, I wanna add a, um, a meta ball here, or like um, you know, a, another object, you can see it's in all of them and it's really nice. You can just keep adding and adding and you don't have to keep adding more modifiers. So I'm gonna just duplicate this one more time and add one more object in just a second. Now I'm gonna hit the tilde key, which is right above the tab key and below the escape key for me and I'm gonna click front. What that's gonna do is when I hit shift A and add my camera, he'll be pointing the right direction. Exactly the front, I'm hold down control, bring him to the end, and then when I hit render, we have all of our grids. I'm gonna bring my world brightness down here to black, and I don't like how I can see everything, it's just kind of ugly. I'm gonna delete this plane, I'm gonna go to the mesh, cube, hit S8, and now he's in all of the things. If you're not selected within that, say, just hit M right here and click the planes collection. and It'll add that cube to all the planes. We need to add a really cool texture, this guy called the principled volume. So principled volume, head over to shading, hit zero to snap your camera to view. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go from surface here to volume to activate him and then bring my density down to zero. I do need to bring the strength of my dots. I'm gonna give it around 19 and then click on the cube and then bring that up. And so now they fade out. So that's what we're looking for. So bring that density up just a little bit until you like how it fades out. And then we're gonna animate the camera. So I'm gonna keep it at 250 frames, I like that. For motion graphics though, click on the camera icon, I mean the printer icon, and switch to 30 frames a second. If you're sending this to a client or it's gonna go on a big screen, you're gonna to wanna to use 30 frames a second or higher um, LED screens and things like that, they don't really like 24 frames a second. Now, let's click on our camera here. Click on this little orange, I mean yellow icon. I'm gonna go from negative eight, go to the end here, and I don't wanna go to positive eight because it's not quick enough, I'm gonna go to 24. What that does here, if I type it in. So now when we run through this, we're gonna get a perfectly looping scene because the camera is running through these guys and stopping at the right spot. So you can see how that, I actually made one mistake. The camera is in the collection, you can see it moving. I'm just gonna move him into the regular collection. So there's only one camera in the scene. So now, the reason why it loops, just to quickly explain it, it starts here and we go to the end, it stops here. So that's one collection, two collection, and it stops at the second collection. So that makes it perfectly looping on the 24. So it's eight, 16, 24 works in the math. So now we have this really, really cool gridding animation. And again, like I mentioned, you can use Bloom if you want, um, depending on the use case. Bloom really works well if you're just posting this to social media. I'm gonna keep it off. So now we're done. You can just go ahead and go back to the nodes and really edit it as you want to make it look a certain way. If you'd like, I tweaked around with it and did a lot of different things 
when I was working in the animation, you can also animate the uh, camera to move, different things like that. So, so this is how you make a really stylized grid animation. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.